Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be talking about something that I find extremely interesting and something I think has massive, absolutely massive potential and that of course is 3D printing for with your Gunpla. Of course, if you are a regular here on the channel, you know exactly what Gunpla is, but just for those of you who don't, it is Gundam plastic models, which are these right here. So have you ever had an awesome idea for a mecha, a Gundam, a custom, something you can't quite do with pla plate or parts from other Gundams because they don't really exist? Or maybe they were made as a P-Band, I think, and you kind of don't want to go and pay for that, but I said nothing. Either way, Gundam and 3D printing are a match made in heaven. Personally, I'm an absolute 3D printing beginner. Honestly, I thought that 3D printers were obnoxiously expensive and never really looked into getting one. So I do have to thank the guys over at Anycubic for sending me on one of their Photon resin printers. Of course, if you do want one of your own, there is a link down there in the description. I'll pop it up on the screen right now so you can see exactly how much it costs. And honestly, I was blown away by how cheap these are. Kind of wish I got one sooner. But anyway, that's enough rambling about that. Let's get printing. So before I actually get into the 3D printing, how you set up the printer, etc. Here is a bunch of the stuff that I did end up printing, and I have to say it was a lot of fun, but it did take quite a bit of getting used to. Two things I wish I knew you needed before starting into this is one, isopropyl alcohol, and two, some kind of LED light or something like one of those acrylic nail-like things for fully curing your print once it's finished. If I'd known that, this wouldn't have taken so long. But anywho, here we go. So first off, as for the printer, it comes packed in a cardboard box, it's got this white section inside, very simply packed with everything that comes with it, and yeah, I already unboxed this before and totally deleted the footage, so <laughs> I'm sorry about that. But once you get it out, it looks like this. So of course, the initial setup is the most important part. Set it up right the first time and you won't have to keep resetting it up, and you won't get any failed prints. This setup is super easy. Step one, once you've got it opened up, you need to throw that platform in there, screw it on real tight, not too tight though. Turn that bad boy on. Step two then is you need to level the platform. To do this, you loosen it up first with a hex wrench, move it all the way down to the bottom to the point where it will hold a single piece of paper in position like this right here. Make sure it's level, tighten it back up again, and there you go, you're ready to go. So you will be handling some UV resin here, so included in the box is some masks and gloves. I used up the majority of them while getting used to this thing, so the ones that come in them are blue, not black, like the ones I'm using. So after inserting the resin vat, tightening both screws on either side, the last step before you're ready to go is to pour the resin into the resin vat. And of course, once again, make sure to be wearing your gloves and your mask. So in order to run through the entire process of how you get something printed, I'm gonna go with something simple first, which is this right here, your typical Xeon heat sword from Mobile Suit Gundam. So everything I am going to print in this video is from Thingiverse. They are free, but you can donate to the artist who designed them. This heat sword right here is by BobLol126. And for anything that I do print in this video, I will put a link down there in the description in case you want to print it yourself. Once you have your file downloaded, head on to the Photon Slicer software, which looks something like this. There is the heat sword 3D data. That rectangle box you see in there is a representation of the platform inside of the printer on the bottom and the rest is pretty much the capacity of the printer so as you can see way too big so over on the left we have a bunch of options to move it around change the size etc so i cut it down to a nice manageable 30 percent in the end i found this was a little bit on the small side so i'd maybe recommend something more like 37 to 40 percent but next to the percentage you can actually see what it will be in millimeters so you can get a good idea of the size it will end up when you are happy with the size, we jump up to the top right hand corner here to that middle button and this is to make the raft and the supports for your 3D print. Once it's all ready, it will look something like this right here and that's pretty much it. We just head up to this button right here to slice and we're ready to go. Next up then, you just pop that file onto the included memory stick which looks like this right here. It's white, it's a memory stick, what can I say? Stick that into the USB port in the side of the printer like so. Click print on the menu on the touch screen, navigate to find your file. Finally then, just hit that play button and by the magic of science, you've got your heat sword. That is crazy. Honestly, the way this works is mesmerizing. It's like it summons the item out of a bath of liquid. In this case, it looks like green milk. It's crazy, it's awesome. I have to admit, I'm absolutely hooked. So now that your heat sword is printed, you take the platform out of the printer using the included, I guess, scraper, spatula, 
You just scrape that off the platform. What I did to remove the excess resin is I washed it with some warm soapy water, followed by a wash with isopropyl alcohol. You can do one or the other, but I decided to do both. Make sure it's clean. Also, I will mention at this point, you may want to cure this more using some kind of LED light or something similar because, well, it needs it. There is the example of what the finished heat sword looks like. This obviously could do with some cleaning up. I'm not going to do it in this particular video. And there is it in the hand of a Regelgoog looking pretty awesome. Like I mentioned, it could do with being a little bit bigger, but all in all, this is fantastic. Anyway, I did print a whole bunch of things for this video, and I will mention that you will have to chop these off the support, so you will need a nippers or something similar. Also, there will be some cleanup where it was attached to the supports, but all in all, it's a pretty simple procedure. So once again, at this point, I will mention that all of the things that I printed in this video were free. Of course, you can tip the artists, and each of them were downloaded from the website Thingiverse. Again, links will be down there in the description for you to print your own. The first thing here is the Oryx 78 mini bust, and this is by Doronzo83. So of course, the link to his work in the description. One thing you might be wondering is why this is a different color to everything else in this video, and that is because I used a different resin for this than I did to the rest. This is the resin that comes with the printer. The other resin is a plant-based resin, this lighter one right here, and that one is sold separately. So this Gundam mini bust right here is printed quite a bit smaller than the actual intended print size. That's because this is one of the first things I actually was testing the printer with. So I just scaled it down so it'd be a faster print. So this right here was one of the first things I printed, and this is where I made a lot of my beginner mistakes. The first thing I would mention to anyone who's about to print something and has never done it before is, when you're deciding where the supports go, make sure they're on the least visible and least functional side of what you're printing because that's the side you're gonna have to spend so much time cleaning up. In this case, I should have put them on the underside of the head, but instead, what I did was I put them on the two surfaces that need to be glued together. So that means they don't really fit so well, and once again, I should put them on the underside because those were functional surfaces. So, once again, be warned, be smart about where you attach the supports. Anyway, this guy here is made of four different parts. We've got the base, the back of the head, then the front of the head, and as for the V-fin here, don't get too shocked by my next level techniques, but yeah, I'm just gonna stick this on with tack. Anyway, boom, there it is. So there is a full spin of what it looks like finished. Once again, that big seam line through the middle would not be there if I printed it properly, but once again, this was one of my first ever prints, so that's where the mistakes were. The detailing is great, it's awesome, and I will mention that I did scale this down a lot. You could print it a whole lot bigger if you wanted to. Anyway, on to the next print. So when it comes to Gunpla, there's one thing that I find Bandai really drops the ball on. They only ever make mobile suits. They never make any of the other kind of vehicles in 144th or 1100 scale. Sure, there was a box a while ago, the Ground War sets from Mobile Suit Gundam MS Igloo. They look pretty cool, but they're hard to get now, and if you just want the little tanks that's in the box, and don't particularly want the old high-grade Ground Gundam and an old high-grade Zaku, then what are you to do? Thanks to Chris M112 over on Thingiverse, once again, link in the description, this is free to print, but you can tip the guy. This is a Type 61 battle tank from the Gundam universe, so this is the Federation style tank. The particular data is for printing this at about 28mm scale, but I wanted something that would match with my high grades. So I did scale it down a bit, but I totally failed math in school and not much has changed. So it did end up a little bigger than I expected it to be. But once again, if you are printing something like this for a diorama, for a background piece, etc., the exact size doesn't really matter so much. It could be in the background, the foreground, etc. And all in all, that is what I want something like this for. This thing is incredibly detailed. Honestly, I am so impressed by this. It looks awesome. The caterpillar tracks, the sponsons, the turrets, everything about this is awesome. Perfect for a high grade scale diorama. But anyway, on to the next print. So before we actually get into the main event of this video, which is what I really, really wanted to print, which was that absolutely awesome Dane's Leaf, I was curious as to how detailed this printer can get. So what I immediately thought of was my other plastic addiction, which is Warhammer 40,000. I know it's not Gundam, but for these small scale minis, you need a lot of detail, and I wanted to try it out. So what I've got here is three Space Marine Eliminators. These are from the Shadow Spear box set, looking pretty awesome with their cloaks and Bolter-style sniper rifles. So let's see how the Photon 
deals with something this small and this detailed. So once again, jumping on over to Thingiverse and Carnage King has a whole multitude of 40k style minis on here. So what I went for was the Eliminator Sniper number one and Sniper number three. Of course, once again, links in the description. These are free to print, but you can tip the artist. So these do print out in tiny, tiny parts, so we need to stick them together. I tried using some tack but failed, so I bust out the super glue and actually stuck them together properly. Go me! Once these are stuck together, they look fantastic. I'm absolutely blown away by the detail this printer can print. These are tiny, really, really small, and the detail is fantastic. So if you're thinking of a resin printer for maybe printing out custom parts for your own custom Space Marine chapter, like shoulder pads, etc., or just some awesome custom parts for your Imperial Knights, something that I'm totally about to try, this shoulder pad looks insanely cool. But yeah, seriously, if you had the 3D modeling chops, imagine the sort of things you could do with this. The customizing potential is off the charts. It is essentially unlimited. I know someone's going to ask, what do these look like painted? But <laughs> you're barking up the wrong tree here. Honestly, I really, really need to make some time to paint my minis. The amount of unpainted Warhammer I have right now is disgusting. But anyway, on to the main event. So enter the Danesleaf. So this right here is a multi-part kit by SoBanana once again over on Thingiverse. And once again, it's free, you can tip the artist, and the link is down there in the description. So I will mention with this, this is absolutely perfectly designed. That means you don't actually have to change any sizes, etc. inside the slicer software, you just pop in the files, print them, and you're good to go. All the pegs fit perfectly, just the way they are. So Banana, you're an absolute legend. Did I mention you don't even need glue or anything like that because it holds together with toothpicks? Well, technically you could use some kind of wire, a bar, or something like that, but I just use toothpicks, and they also make up your Dainsleaf bullet. Pretty awesome. Everything pops together really easily. They're all perfectly fitted like I mentioned already, but the one little thing that I did have a problem with, it's nothing to do with the original design, it's once again where I placed the supports. So that does mean that this one little segment here, you'll notice I have the reverse way around, and that's because the side that was to face outwards, I put to the bottom, and it got a little bit ruined when I was cleaning it up. So the detail is not as crisp as the other side, so I just flipped it around so it looked better. So once again, be careful where you lay out your supports. It'll make your job cleaning it up a whole lot easier. In the end, this thing is gargantuan and looks awesome. This right here is scaled for the high grade kits, but I'm sure if you want it, you could scale them up for the 1-100s. First off, I'm gonna fit this on what it should be fit on, and that is a graze. All we have to do is pop off the left arm as well as the backpack segments. Like I mentioned, everything is spaced and sized perfectly, so this backpack section here just slots in seamlessly. Absolutely perfect. As for up on the arm when I was fitting this first, I did make a bit of a mistake and missed the fact that there is a second part. So I did file down one section and that makes it fit a bit loose. So I'm just going to use my absolute expert techniques to tighten it up. And that is, yeah, I'm just going to take a bit of kitchen towel and actually shove it in there. And it works. It totally works. So if you ever want to tighten up a joint really quickly, very temporarily, just do that. Shove tissue paper in it. So anyway, that is what it looks like finally attached onto the greys, and that's all awesome and everything, but what's better than a greys with a Dane's leaf? This right here, Barbatos with a Dane's leaf. And more importantly, Barbatos Lupus Rex. Man, just look at that. That is one killer weapon on one beast of a mobile suit. So before I finish this video off, once again, thanks so much to Anycubic for sponsoring this video for sending me on the printer so I could show you guys just how awesome it is combining 3D printing and Gumpla, an absolute match made in heaven. And I will also mention that I'm actually a little bit surprised by how little of a Gumpla 3D printing community is out there. I actually thought there'd be loads of cool parts for retrofitting onto Gundam kits that have shared inner frames, etc. For example, the IBO kits, they all have the same parts. I'm surprised there isn't custom armor for making your own Gundam frame. I'm surprised there isn't custom parts for the Master Grade Seed line or Wing line of kits, which all have very similar parts. The opportunities are endless, the sort of customs you could make. I have absolutely no experience with 3D modeling, etc. But this is something I would love to see a whole lot more of. I am going to make a second video on this if you have any ideas of what you'd like to see. So anything cool worth 3D printing, Gunpla wise or otherwise, then drop them down there in the comments and I'll put them in video number two. As usual, thank you so, so much for watching. If you want a 
any cubic photon of your own, there's a link down there in the description. As always, make sure to come back for more videos, more reviews, etc. And I'll see you next time.